So question 37, you push a 15 kilogram box of Christmas ornaments across the floor. The box speeds up from rest to two meters per second in four seconds. Calculate the change in kinetic energy of the box. Kinetic energy, as you know, is the energy of um, motion. And the equation for kinetic energy is Ke, sometimes I use a K, it's the same thing. Ke equals one half mv squared. In other words, kinetic energy in joules is one half times the mass in kilograms times the speed squared, speed in meters per second squared. That's the basic equation to calculate kinetic energy. Well, we know it's mass, we know it's initial velocity, and we know it's final velocity, so we can calculate the initial and final kinetic energies. What we're looking for is the change in kinetic energy. And so if we find the initial and the final, then we'll subtract final minus initial, and we'll know the change. Okay. So the initial kinetic energy, let's just go ahead and do this. So the initial is going to be 1 half times mass times the initial velocity squared. It's 1 half times 15 times 0 squared, which of course is going to be 0, put a dash to there, 0 joules. The final kinetic energy is going to be one half times mass times I don't need that one half times mass times Bf squared. Final, final. So that's one half times fifteen times two squared. And uh, two squared is four. Two squared is four divided by two is two times fifteen is thirty joules. So the change in kinetic energy is KEF minus KEI, which is 30 minus 0, which of course is 30 joules. So the answer is 30 joules. Let's just be sure I got this right on my answers. Yes, I, I wrote that correctly. Thank goodness. So 30 joules. The next question asks for Oh, I am grateful for reading glasses. Let me see. Thank you, Costco. Uh, determine the network done on the box. Network done on the box. The thing to remember here is that the um, network equals the change in energy of the box. This is a box sliding on a floor. You're pushing a box across the floor. There is no change in potential energy. There's only a change in kinetic energy. There is no change in potential energy. There's only a change in kinetic energy. So we just calculated the change in the energy. We said it was 30 joules. That was the answer to the previous question. So the, this is the cause of the change in kinetic energy of the box. The box changed its kinetic energy because it sped up from 0 to 2 meters per second. Um, changed its kinetic energy by 30 joules. What caused that? Well, because somebody pushed on it. That's that. So it's the same number. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. We calculated the effect from the change in the kinetic energy that is the, that's equal to the cause because that's caused. It. So it's 30 joules also. That's why the answer is the same number. Uh, all right, next part. Uh, la 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 la, calculate the power exerted on this thing. Well, power is work over time. Power is work over time. And, or, power is the change in energy over time. And this thing changes its energy by 30 joules all over 4 seconds. And 30 divided by 4 is 7.5, I think. Doing that in my head, which is not a safe place to be. Yeah, 7.5. That's 7.5 joules per second because it's energy over time, a joule in energy over time, so that's per second. So 7.5, it's a rate, 7.5 joules per second. But we name that after um, James Watt. And so that's a watt, 7.5 
watts. W A T T. W A T T. Seven point five watts. Okay. The um, last set of questions um, for multiple choice, at least. Thirty-eight. Uh, it, uh, question thirty-eight. You lift a fifteen kilogram box of Christmas ornaments. Same box. Straight up at a constant speed through a distance of one point five meters in two seconds. Um, what is the change in potential energy? How much power is um, exerted by the lifting force? There's different ways to do this. You lift this thing up slightly. Say you're going to put it on, you know, on a on a shelf somewhere or a, or a table. You know, so you want to lift it up. Or how high does it go? Uh, 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters, you do that in a time of two seconds. The mass, of course, is still 15 kilograms. Okay, and you lift the thing up with constant speed. The reason why that's important is because if it's lifted up at constant speed, there is no change in kinetic energy. The only change in energy is the change in potential energy. And remember that we're only interested in energy changes. Because if the energy is the same before and after, there's no change. <laughs> kind of obvious, I'm sorry. Uh, so we're only interested in energy changes. It's the potential energy that changes in this, in this case, right? So it starts down here. I'm going to call this its initial height of zero. And its final height at, is 1.5 meters. You're lifting the thing up with no change in kinetic energy because it's constant speed. You're lifting it up at, OK. So the change in energy is going to be the change in the potential energy, which is UGF minus UGI. OK, how did I ask this question? What's the change in potential energy? OK, so we're looking for the change in potential energy. Um, that is the change in energy. It's the change in potential. The final potential minus the initial. So that's going to be MGYF minus MGYI. So that's 15 times, we'll use 10, times um, a height of 1.5 minus 0, right? Because this is 15 times 10 times 0, 0. And again, use G for 10. And your G isn't negative. G doesn't have a sign. You can make it negative when you're dropping something. But G itself is just the number 10. That's, that's N times G, that's your weight, right? That's the object's weight times it, the height through you through which you lifted it. So that's going to be um, 50 times, 15 times 10 is 150 times 1.5. I think this is 225, but let me check. Um, yeah, 225 joules. So that's 225 joules. So that's the change in potential energy. Well, Again, that's, and that's the change in energy. There's no change in kinetic energy. So I'm going to erase this. I need the space. So what's next? The, um, how much power is exerted? Well, to know the power, you need to know the change in energy. Well, delta E is the change in potential which we just said was 225 joules. So power equals work over time or a change in energy over time, which is going to be 225 all over 2.5 seconds. Uh, let's see what this is. All right, all right, 2.5 is 90. Let's just be sure that's the same number I got on my answer key. I mean, whoopsies. Did I, did I make a mistake? Did I make a mistake? Um, oh, it's two seconds. God, no wonder. Bad teacher. It's two seconds. <coughs> Sorry. So that's two seconds. Just two. So what's that going to be? 112.5? Is that what I said? Yeah, 112.5. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's still change in energy with the energy change by 225 joules divided by the time of two seconds. So 112.5 watts. 
That's one way to do it. You could also calculate the work done um, to lift this up. And the work, uh, the work done, you need to know the lifting force, all right? If you drew a force diagram, which I know you all love, all right, you apply a force, your lifting force, and there's the weight. Sorry about that. Here's the weight. This thing would weigh um, M times G, which is going to be um, 15 times 10 is 150 newtons. And then the work done by the lifting force is going to be the force times the distance, which is 150 times 1.5, because you lift it through 1.5 meters. That's 225 joules. And then if you put power as work over time, that's going to be 225, again, over 2, which is the same answer. Um, Lastly, there is one other way to calculate power. Why do it all these different ways? Well, you only have to do it one way. But there is another way to calculate power if you feel like it. Um, but did I give you a velocity? I, you could calculate, yeah, you could calculate it this way if you want. Um, power is also equal to force times velocity. Well, what force, that's just another equation. What force did you apply? You applied a force because it's constant speed. It's constant speed, so that equals that. That they equal each other, constant speed, no acceleration, constant speed, it's so in the problem. So if that weighs 150 newtons, you apply the force of 150 newtons, so that's 150. And what's the speed? It's constant. You lifted it up in um, distance over time, constant speed. So that's going to be distance of 1.5 meters all over 2 seconds. What's that? 0.75? 150 times... Uh, 0.75 meters per second. That's the speed, right? Speed is distance over time. 0.75 meters per second. And if that doesn't come out to be 112, how am I doing on time? I'm okay. 112.5, um, and I'm in trouble. 150 times 0.75. Yay, thank goodness. It's 112.5 watts. Okay, those are three separate ways to calculate it. Whichever one occurs to you when you're doing the problem is fine. Okay, see ya.